remaining time, we're going to continue. We just had to segue right there about the altar, right? The altar to Selassie in ancient Egypt, right? Um, and now we're going to continue with um, the Exodus, the Exodus story or the story of the Exodus. The Exodus, the black story, is it's a black story. And we're going to just further annotate this right here. We played the, the whole clip um, earlier, and let's continue from here. There, Jacob's clan, the future Israelites, flourish in their new environment. Pause. Now, this happened to us after after the the Civil War. After the Civil War, black people began to flourish. And, and up to the time of integration and going down to Egypt, Washington, D.C., um, our people flourished, right? Now, it, it's so very interesting that if they had, when they went down to Egypt before, before this was set on the currency, you know, and they call this the currency. That means that's the energy. This is the energy. That's what they call currency. If you don't have any current, you, you know what I mean, any power, then you say your phone is dead. But then I say your phone never lived. You see how how they make turn lifeless things into into living things, right? And then we who are living things into lifeless things, part of this economy and currency. And the important point is going to be made right here. But I want to remind you of this, because until you overstand and overcome this spell, recognizing there's no divination against Israel. There's no divination when we know who we be, right? So let's go forward right here and let's continue, continue with this. Jacob's son, Joseph, became as powerful as the rulers of Egypt, the pharaohs. Now, this also happened in our story in America, right? This is why I say that the Exodus, when properly interpreted and getting out of this COINTEL pro black consciousness with the K, and you see, getting out of that, where we somehow have indigestion, we're not properly digesting the real evidence because we are uh, fighting against the ghost of white supremacy, right? White supremacy, how the Selassie defeated white supremacy, it's dead. Mm -hmm. well, because y'all deny him and y'all are afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, your true hope in this world, your true expectation and Egypt, your glory, they're able to continue to fool, hoodwink, bamboozle and distract you. So. Many of our own people, right, in America, after the Civil War, rose as high as Farrell, as, as the ruling as the ruling families of of the Western Gentile white supremacy, which deceived themselves into believing that they were the Egyptians. That's where the Egypt part comes. That's where when we call them Pharaoh, is not to disrespect the righteous among our ancestors, but the unrighteous among our African, black, ancient Egyptian ancestors, may they go to hell just like the white ones. That's why we say Naya Bingi, deaf to black and white, down presses, non-partial. It's about the righteousness of the King of Kings in the black Christ. So we rose to high and prominent positions. And you see this within, there's the book, um, Valley of the Dry Bones by, um, uh, Rudolph uh, R. Windsor. And that book is very interesting when you look at the history that is presented, the hidden history or the suppressed history that, that we need to begin in our homeschooling to really teach our children about the real history, to get off of the pity party, right? Because we are just blessed people if, if that alone is a, a point of rejoicing. Right. That 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 reality right there, when we recognize the half of the story that we haven't been told. So we our people rose to high and prominent positions after the Civil War. Right. And what happened? Well, the, the European, because he was deceived by the devil, you understand, and most deceived by the devil, thought he was superior because of his lack of melanin. Now he recognized he can't stand the sun without us. You, you know what I mean? So he's he's totally, but but he he needs to be brought to repentance as well. They rose up, right, in Louisiana and took over um, the the um, what they call it the 
the, the seats of government that black people had won by overwhelming majority blacks and whites voting and they had won these seats. And when they saw that, well, black people were running the government, you see what I'm saying? So we see a kind of an Egyptian type here, although in ancient Egypt, it was not about race. We need to understand that clearly and get this across to the, to the, the Afrocentric so-called black conscious Kemetan community that ancient Egypt was not about race. It was about religion. Macy has that right. It was about religion. It was about interpretation, right? It was about interpretation of religion, right? Interpretation of the faith, right? And at this time in Exodus, Egypt, Egypt already being an ancient civilization was coming to its twilight time. And the exodus is the twilight zone, just like where we're at right now, we're in the twilight zone. And yet, after Joseph dies, his people are enslaved by the ruling Egyptians. More than a century later, the Egyptians became afraid of revolution and instituted a policy of drowning all the Israelite male infants. Now, that's an interesting point right there. And we can't we can go past this particular part right here. Um, I just thought about Frederick Douglass as, as, a, as, a, as a type of, um, as a type of Joseph, 